Welcome all here to New Richmond, Wisconsin, as we are now live at Cedar Lake Speedway. And the action about to kick off here for the National Dirt Racing Association. Our heats are about to form, and the racing is about to set sail hard charge. And coming up on top, it's time to get down to business here on the big end, about half mile, half short track bank, quarter mile track. Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader Christian Shire. joining you guys here today. As we see Casey sit here down to Cedar Lake Speedway, we're about to see our first heat come onto the stage here as we start on the pole. Davin Cardwell will be in the number 70. He's outside. That's Camden Johnson as he piles up the 22. Run number two, it's going to be Colin Murphy in the nines outside. Ethan Sprague in the 117. Run number three, it's a Robert Tucker in the 17s outside. Jaden Cross in that 13. Row number four is going to be Brent Carey in the 524 is outside. Uh, that's Cody and Evan in the 11. Row number five is Taylor James in the number 14s outside the 022. Brennan Weeks. Row number six is Colton Malone in the 18s outside the 75. Daniel Adam. Row number seven, that's going to be Corey Tuggle in the 324 is outside the 97. Blake W. Heither. Row number eight is going to be Joshua Hawkins in the 98. It's outside the seven. Cameron Comier. And finally, row nine, Frank Gonzalez in the four is outside. That's 22. Drake E. Dryman. And our field of drivers set to go for today's action-packed adventures that lay in wait for them and all that comes with this field and this trow. We, these drivers set to go and the action is set in motion. Ready to fire them on down and head them up here on the track. They are ready to go. They are just awaiting the command and the cue. They have got the cue. The command is a set. We are now set for heat number one. Eight laps of the distance here for our first heat of the day here. Then we'll head on down to the A main after this one. So simply a bit of a hard chargers run here. Solid group, solid lineup of drivers, of course. World Chance Championship drivers in this one, of course, with that 70 of Davin Cardwell. Remember last time he put on a fight and a heck of a run just to get up into that top ranks, top position. If he's going to do it again, he's going to have a lot of hard chargers here and a lot of stuff to deal with. Multi-group track here at Cedar Lake Speedway. Bottom, middle, and top side are going to be the main areas. You're going to watch drivers sling the dirt from. Look for the track to burn up on the middle and the bottom part later on. As I start to migrate up to that top side, look for the sliders to become more and more prevalent. As they sneak them off down off a of corner number four, initiate the green flag. We're off and running. Presented by Everlast Pico, here is your first set of laps here further down as we go to a caution flag. Caution down, caution down, caution down. Well, 
Unfortunately, it appears that Colton Malone did not uh, get off on the right foot, if you will, and this did not go exactly according to plan. Is that about ever last speed code? Here is your reset button, and here is the reset. Here is the uh, look back at this one. Hey, got a little clip there off the corner of turn number two. Goes for a little, well, a little bit of a ride down there. Nothing too major though. I'm not really sure why he decided to uh, park the car there. May have seen something a little bit worse for wear in there than we did. One more look at it from the onboard camera here. Yeah, he got clipped in there, unfortunately, coming off turn number two. And again, that is something you'll see with drivers like that. They'll get a little too tenacious, a little too intensifyingly crazy there. And they may get a little bit harder on the throttle than maybe they realize or they want them to. It's all part of the Dirt Racing Association's style, the National Dirt Racing Association, and dirt in general. It's kind of how it all plays out. You just got to work with what you got. Five to go, turn four to go. Pace truck coming off down out of turn number four. This time on by, refire, refresh. Let's get it back up and running. And Drakey driving, not coming off to a start here. Not getting off the line here as a 22. Camden Johnson sneaking it right at Devin Cardwell there. Cardwell getting a little pumper there from the 22 with only three remaining as they fire him off down into turn number one. Cross over there down at turn four. They slide him down and you saw the 22 drive it down low, forcing Gavin to make sure he did not get too hard in the throttle. He knew Slider was coming. Two to go for the ring. Oh, excuse me, that's five to go, excuse me. Looks like we're swinging around. Looks like we got four to go this time. Yep, we got four to go. Why did I say two to go? I, I my, someone fix my timing suits up, air police. Okay, four to go this time for sure. We're going down the back straightaway. We're heading a hard charge for the race lead. Still, Cam Johnson and Cardwell trying to hold each other down. Meanwhile, Colin Murphy. Well, looks like he decides to exercise his demons up there. He's going to do some high rise, high sides on the outside. Piling them down here, down with three to go. This time for sure, let's send it down to two to go this time. Camden Johnson has got the bottom line secured. He's got a whole lot of run up that middle section grounds clearance here. He's staying on the lead. Has a little cross thread there by Cody Nevin. The 11 gets a little bit better of Ethan Sprague there in the 117 as we go white flag out for the number 22. Johnson trying to stay just ahead of Murphy as well as Cardwell in offense earn number four this time on by trade the whites to the checkers and Johnson will hold up Murphy and Cardwell to the line in a solid effort and a solid position for these drivers. Whoop, and it looks like we're just going to have a little fun with that one. Why not? Warm up session's coming up now, so we'll go ahead and let the drivers kind of cool them up and get ready to go here, but let's take a look at our uh, warm-up session here. The results are now in from the heat. Let's take a look at them. All right, so Cameron Johnson is going to win this one. And it'll be Murphy, Cardwell, Cross, Tucker, Nevin, Gary, Sprague, or Sprague, I believe it's Sprague, and James and Weeks are going to go top 10 in this one. So that'll get us all squared away as the drivers now perform some warm-up time. And you know one thing right now, these guys are going to be hitting these loud pedals as hard as they can just to get something to burn up on the track. The track is going to slick up a bit now, so you've got two lines you can really aim towards. Most drivers will say, go top side, you can run the cushion up there. I will say, though, if you take a close look, you can actually see that bottom lane has a bit of grip down there still. It has a little bit of tackiness to it. Remember, in iRacing racing and in the real world, if you can find anywhere that's got some tack and some grip, you can use that to your advantage sometimes. Slick doesn't always mean good things, and it doesn't always mean you're going to get the best run when it comes down to it. Gavin yeah, Carwell, no surprise here. He's fast here so far in practice ahead of Jaden Cross here. As Cross looks to try to cross up ahead, try to get back a little bit more focused in. Remember that 13K? A little bit of a new repraisal done on that one. Pretty nice looking, I will say. Yeah, we do. I got a couple new camera angles we were working on. We experimented a little bit. So we put one right at the nose of the filter as warm-up has now concluded. So they are not wasting time. and They're not wasting anything down there. That is for sure. Main event time coming up now. Let's get down to business, folks.
All right, here we go. Let's line them up in position. This is where we're going to start them. On the pole, Camden Johnson will be your number one starter. Is outside Colin Murphy. Right over two is Evan Cardwell with Jaden Cross. Right over three, Robert Tucker is outside Cody Nevin. Row four, Brett Brent Carey is outside Ethan Sprague. And row number four, excuse me, row number five, that will then introduce us to Taylor James and then Brennan Weeks. Row number six, that will be Blake W. Heither, or Heather, presuming Heither here. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, folks, if you can. Joshua Hawkins will be on his outside, though. Daniel Adam, and then we'll have Drakey, Drakey Dryman, and then Colton Malone. Not making the call, and I do not believe Corey Tuggle or Cameron Cormier or Frank Gonzalez will make the call either. So that lines up our field. It lines up our set of drivers for today's action. Down here as the night sky is starting to clean up and the action starts to heat up. It is time again to send it on down. Turn on the music and let the drivers sing to their sores and just play to the rhythm of the beat. It's parade lap time here for the National Dirt Racing Association. A corner number four to the green flag we fly him let's hit it down here goes the fire here comes the speeds let's get down to it boys Johnson takes top side looks like he decided not to go towards the bottom this time oh but that doesn't mean Cardwell won't go there he fires it off to the bottom lane here you got multiple drivers trying to find a line trying to find a rhythm the a main certainly has set these drivers off a few plagues and a few sparks. They're at it hard as can be right now. For 45 laps of the distance here in this a main, there's going to be a lot of smooth running, a lot of hard racing here from multiple ends as the nine of Colin Murphy has some problems down there, unfortunately, for the number nine. The PTM Instant Replay presented in part by Everlast Speed Coach tells all and shows all. Here's what happened. We're talking about running that cushion up there with a nine. You can see he was driving more than just a cushion. Takes a clip out of the wall, entering into turn number one, though, as he comes off the front straightaway. Got trapped on the wall protection, but good driving on his end, actually backing off, getting out of the way for other drivers not to get messed up in it. Smart move and smart racing there by the number nine. As the field now has a square back up to, squ to phase one. Square back into phase one here and reset the field, reset the clocks, reset the timers here. 40 laps still needed to be completed. Laps do not count under caution. And in my opinion, this is one of those hardest things as a driver you have to kind of come off from. You get the excitement, the adrenaline just ready to rock and reel, and now you have to go back into this moment where you have to slow down and really think and pace. One thing I'm kind of noticing too, and I, don't, I know I haven't ran a late model in a while, but there's a lot bit of a damage model that's kind of been updated on these things. You actually see the damage on the uh, fenders actually kind of kicked in. I don't know if that actually makes the cars a little bit more bulletproof to actually get a little bit of bumping and dragging in there or whatnot, but Gotta admit, pretty cool and pretty good to see that they've at least got that upgraded in the damage system as the green flag flies back on out. And maybe it's just because I haven't watched Late Miles in a while, but I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen that. I know we had a few updates here. It's because of updates. One thing we didn't update, though, was the three wide, four wide salutes. Sending them off down into turn number one and two. As clear as the gap. Cody Nevin, Robert Tucker all looking for an opening as Brent Gary escapes with the spots ahead of them all. And you can see that outside cushion is now starting to become no man's land for anyone that dares not try to run up there. And you can see as well Card Cardwell and Johnson in a frenzy of just absolute frenetic pass interference and racing it down on the track. 
The passing interference basically results in the fact that you can barely pass around there if you don't get a run on him. Johnson knows this. That's why he's holding back Cardwell as much as he can. Cardwell trying to line it back up. Drafts it off on the outside, looking for the slingshot to dive it down to the bottom lane again. And it looks like the 70 might be finding a little bit of run down there still in the bottom lane off three and four, but unfortunately, it's not helping them that much in one and two. Every driver for themselves here as they continue to get a little bit clustered up and clustered in a bit more. The nine are calling Murphy making a great comeback here after that little squabble he suffered a minute ago. Brennan Weeks here in the 0.22. Looks like he's making a little bit of a fight hand with the actual 12 car. He's not giving out just yet. Neither is this guy right here, Daniel Adam. Daniel trying to, you can just see, work the wheel, work structurally in, and you can see him just hounding that wheel around. I think I said last night, he's hugging that wheel more than a newborn baby. Well, I will not hold that phrase back, although I think at this point we might have to turn that into a shirt. I turn like an Alex Bowman out here. I might be able to make some money off that. Who knows? You never know anymore these days. Anyway, back to the action right now here. Cardwell lost some ground, lost some speed. A little bit of problems down there for Dryman, though. Dryman slowed down off pace here. Goes a refire to get it back on the front straightaway here and get it some speed under the hood, but that definitely will cost him precious time. Knowing that he's going to have to try to get back from that level of flank field these drivers are keep hitting up with. It's just constant back and forth between all ends as we've got a three car battle now here. Down four. Looks like the third spot. Brent Gary three wide salute right on the outside. Brent trying to hold that 11 and the 17 back. And Tucker and them still fighting it hard into the corners. Devin's not giving an inch here to him. Neither is any of the others. What a trouble down there for a cross. Jaden Cross loses it off turn number four. Caution will fly on out. And a bit of a miss slide, if you will, on the 13K side of things. I don't even know what the heck happened there or what he did wrong, but let's take a look at it. He was riding that thing, though. You can see him just pushing that thing on the cushion, trying to get a runoff. And look at this. Gets a little too far up, and look at that right there. The entire fender just completely drove on top of the actual wall protection and just completely nullified any run that the 13K had. And Jane Cross, I got to believe, is probably not a happy camper knowing that just messed up his entire race. So I feel good to get squared back away right now. We are under the pace lights under the caution flag. As we get squared away here, though, real quick, folks, we'll cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after this quick commercial message. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's race has been presented in part by from the National Drill Race Association by Everlast Speed Co. Be sure to visit them up here on Facebook at Everlast Speed Co. so you can get all your latest racing products and needs. A big thank you to Everlast Speed Co. from all of the National Drill Race Association and from us here at Pete's Racing TV. Field squared away, down back to square number one, off a of corner number three, down into turn number four. You see the green flag fly high. That means it's time to go racing. Pace truck, get out of here before you get run over, sir. Oh, there's a whole lot of momentum thrown on the outside. There's a lot of power straight, slung in dirt all around these corners ends. Daniel, Daniel Adam and now mixing it up for wide salute off turn number two though as they hammer the throttles down even more everyone trying to find something or a little bit more grip just to get around the other that's the beauty of Cedar Lake it's a haven for these drivers it's a haven for any kind of this race and look at Brett Carey the number five now sneaking his way across the bottom lane he's got a run on the bottom he got it up there to Cardwell Cardwell probably wondering wait a minute where did he come from Gonza trying to hold the speed down line, but look at Carey just slamming the gas pedal, matching the pedal straight to that metal, holding it on the line. How is he able to even do that is beyond me, but he's hanging in there. He's trying to get the race lead away. Johnson, if he makes one bobble, one mistake, Carey might come down at him. Oh, but I think Cardwell beat him to it there. Cardwell slammed the door on him, coming down through turn number two. 18 laps remain as we go three wide saloon down on third number two yet again. 
no one giving an inch, no one backing down off the throttle. Doesn't matter if they're in the front, doesn't matter if they're in the back. They're going full haymaker down on the ends. Taylor James, number 14, giving us a great onboard camera here with the dirt slinging, the dirt flying. These, vi these visor tears off very easily here, but I don't think he realized I kind of stuck that in between his helmet cam there. Just don't take my vi just don't take my camera with it, buddy. Oh, speaking of taking stuff with it, what about Cody, Cody Nevin, the 11? All of a sudden, he's starting to come in through the field, come in through the track. Where the heck are these drivers coming from that's, that everyone else can't seem to figure out is beyond me. And they just raise that left front right in the air. They're gritting all the grip on the right side, so they have to raise them up somewhere. And that's where all that speed and all that power comes from. It's just down on that line and down on that edge, trying to hold everything in play with only 14 laps remain. Oh, a slip up though by the 11 and Nevin and a great save there entering in three and four. He gives a little nudge there to Ethan saying, hey man, nice save and thanks for the bath, but you're not getting by me that easily. Gives him the haymaker, slinging it down to the bottom lane, blocks him off, says no, I'm not going down that easily, but the 117 has the upper hand. He's got the run in the middle, holds it down as they continue to go three wide saluting. Holding that bottom lane down the five right now. Brent Carey still trying to find some momentum to get the cam to Johnson. Johnson, though, is not giving him an inch, nor is he giving him any breathing room down there. Robert Tucker hoping to maybe find something, maybe an edge or a little bit of a spot off here with that bottom, with that top side using the wall as a little bit of a gravity fortation device. It's not exactly working, though. With 10 laps to go, too, things are starting to get a little bit more creeped in, a little bit more on the edge. No one giving it. It's still three wide bumpers, fenders put together. This is more. This is more crazy than I think we saw last night on YouTube with the Pushing Limit Racing League. These National Dirt Race Association boys just don't give an inch, nor do they care. And that's honestly fun TV if you want to watch that kind of racing. But yet at the same time, it's so clean, it's so refurbished. You just can't deny that. They keep themselves in check and keep themselves out from getting too out of hand, but somehow they hold their lines down and just continue to do what they know best, and that's racing. Oh, Devin Card, well, right off of turn number two there, right into the wall, and into some traffic he goes. Caution's coming out for Cody Nevin as he clips, gets clipped in by the number 70 of Cardwell. Cardwell had no room, and he clips it up top, got smacked a little bit, and now Johnson has got to be a little bit more livid knowing what he's going to have to deal with. They'll have five to go on the restart, but let's take a look back here at Cody Nevin's little instant replay here. We saw what happened down there to Cardwell, so here's a look at it from uh, Nevin's replay, man, it's point. 70 just kind of gets clipped in. Nevin tries to hammer, and instead, the Hammer Brothers get him. Gets bashed, dashed, and crashed on around. Really, there ain't much else he can do about that one. Holy smokes. How on earth that Camden Johnson has had the race lead for this long is beyond me. He's been structurally sound this entire race, but that doesn't mean anything here. I guess it'll be three to go on the restart. I thought we were not. I thought they weren't going to count the cautions in the main main, but I guess that's maybe the different story. Gamden is going to remain focused and dedicated to that top side. Knows the five's going to try to gun it. You saw the five go, but they didn't go off, and they're not going now. Caution, not out yet. Will they throw it? Big wreck there, entering off. Yes, caution's out. Caution is out. Doesn't matter what Camden and Brent, Robert or Brent do now. Caution's out. And Cardwell, well, we saw it from the angle there. It looked like things got a little bit intensifyingly crazy there. We got three green-white checkers to use, but let's flat the, the 70 here. Oh, and it looks like the 11 actually got clipped in. Not, not the uh, pink 11 there, not Nevin. But it looked like Cardwell, dad really know where to go. And unfortunately, Taylor James actually just got completely rear on. Kind of sent off to the shadow realm, unfortunately. His car is done. He ended up upside down on his roof. Here's another look at it. Cardwell knew he had to go, 
but, but this was not the way he wanted it to go and the camera gets completely destroyed unfortunately well that's one camera they owe me now Well, we're going to try to get to that, that Everlast B Co. white flag here if we can, if it's all possible. They'll have two to go. Three green-white checkers. This is the first attempt. Going to set it on down once more. Here we go. Much cleaner start. Top shelf, here comes Camden, but wait a minute! Brent Terry from the bottom! He stole Camden's lead! And the yellow flag pops out at the most inopportune times, and I didn't even realize Camden lost the lead till Brent came around it. I was looking at something else here. I don't know if they're going to count Camden as the leader because Brent had got him. I don't, hold on a minute. Well, I don't even know where the heck to begin with this one. We'll take a look at the replay. Let's just take a look at this here. Brent literally guns it off the start, and I have to uh, I have to make an apology. I didn't realize he, took, he had the lead on the start. So he starts in the lead on the get-go, and I'm trying to figure out where that started from because Camden, technically, if I remember right, looking at the sheets, he was actually the one in the race late and that's uh well that's the reason why our wreck came out there cam that that car well got completely rare handed there so i gotta apologize up front that was a mishap on my end i i've i've been doing this for like two years guys they gotta give me a break once in a while even not even the even the best make mistakes so i apologize that was a big mistake on my end i'll admit that one up front whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. easy there tucker Caution lights are off now. Pace car is set in motion. Off a of turn number four. It's time on by Camden Johnson. That was going to get himself a little bit of a love tap and a little run on Brent Carey. Brent goes to the bottom, though. That's where he likes to stay. That's where he wants to stay with. Entering off turn number four. White flag high in the air. Which one's it going to be? Which one's it going to be? Johnson is going to shred the outside. He's got to run on Brent. Brent needs to hold on. To the bottom he goes. Camden trying for one last slingshot maneuver. Not enough. It's going to go to Brent Carey. Wow. Can you say Cinderella story from the outhouse to the White House? He starts seventh and takes this one away from everybody. Unbelievable, my friends. This was certainly a memorable race here for the five of Brent Carey, and I got a feeling he's pretty happy about that one there. Race winner Brent Carey pulls this one into victory lane, and what a performance and a show baking performance for him and his crew. And it is official, he is your race winner here. He will take home the gold, he'll take home the glory. But I don't think he did it without maybe making a few friends and maybe a few enemies along the way. But that was something, to say the least here, for your A main event. What a fight and what a finish there by all drivers involved. Great showing by everyone in this race as we take a look at our final results now. Brent Carey pulls off the W. Camden Johnson, Ethan Sprague will go third, second and third. Daniel Adam, and then it will be Robert Tucker, Colin Murphy, Drakey Dryman. Uh, Blake W. Heither, ninth to be Kent Davin Cardwell, and 10th to Cody Nevin. Unreal performance by all drivers involved and a great showing by the field as we now bring in the top three up on the roster for a third place finisher today. Ethan Sprague will pull it off in third, and Ethan, congratulations on this third. And I'm going to already say it now. I apologize if I've been saying your last name wrong the whole time, but what a performance down here and a good showing at the very end for you and your crew. Thank you. Um, 
it, it's fine if you mess it up. So let's go ahead and th talk about this one for a second. You had pretty much a hard charging car. He had a hot, lot of hard racing him down on the ends. Go five spots up for the field. You know, that that's definitely not easy to do considering even there's multiple angles. These guys weren't exactly giving you guys a lot of room down there, were they? No, it, it, this race was pretty tight. I mean, I think there's a point where we were four wide, but we got the best of it. We had the car dialed in. Had the car dialed in, had everything tip top shape and all that. So I'll ask you this real quick, Ethan. Uh, who do you want to thank here today for this one? Uh, I got to thank uh, Backwood Speed Shop, uh, Cameron Ritter Designs, and everyone who else is on the car. Strong performance here for the, for the Ethan Sprague here. Congratulations on that, sir, and we'll catch you out next time, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan comes away here with a solid performance here and a great battle to the end as we now are joined in by our second-place finisher here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in Camden Johnson in that number uh, five, in that number five excuse or excuse me 22 i should say here and nevertheless camden congratulations on this one sir and what a wild wild race this was man you had everything on the line had everything going down and yet it just all kind of came unglued here on those restarts what went down there sir um really the cautions they just uh screwed my whole night uh without the cautions i feel like we would have sailed home for a pretty good victory but uh that I think the second to last restart uh, with caution laps counting, whenever the caution flag came out, Brent, he got a better start than me, and he got to the bottom and got around me, and with only a green white checkered left, I, I couldn't catch him in time. But uh, it was a really good race, and congrats to Brent on the win. It was a good race and a good win for him, but let's talk about this for a second because you didn't exactly give him any room to give him that chance to win that easily. You go topside, run that thing straight down to the ground and hitting it hard, and then you go straight to the bottom and into three and four for that final run, only coming up about a half a car length short to the win. What was it like for you just knowing that you kind of had that, sh that shot to take it from him and he just kind of clipped it off from you there? Uh, my goal there was to get the good run off the top and head down the bottom. Not wasn't trying to get into him. I was just uh, trying to f maybe him look in his mirror and force a mistake and push up the racetrack. Uh, just any kind of thing that could have happened there for me to be able to get around him cleanly and grab onto the win. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, though, a solid performance here and a good closing moment end for this. So I'll ask you this here, sir, as you come away here second. Who do you want to thank here for this? Uh, I got to thank Mid South Mafia, uh, NLRA, Dirty Amigos, Majulacy Speed Shop, CFM Esports, uh, CFM by JDM, and just everybody that's on the race car that helped me out a lot and can't thank them enough. And you for putting on the great broadcast. I appreciate the support, sir. Congratulations on the second place finish, and what a performance here as well for you and your crew. Thank you. Game to Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, comes away second out of the field. He'll he'll just barely get squeezed on by here as your winner today, Brent Carey, brings the five and a victory lane. Brent, first off, congratulations, sir, and unbelievable. You had pretty much this thing dialed to that bottom, almost glued to that. Are you sure you didn't have some Scarilla glue down there on those tires that were sticking a little bit more to the tacky stuff? Well, you know, some might think, but I think I just nailed the setup today. Uh, I knew it was going to get slick, and I knew the boys were going to want the top, so I figured the best best bet for me would be the bottom. So I stuck to the game plan and ran it all race long, and it, it paid off in the end. It paid off in the end. You had a great showing here, and it looked like, you know, from the record as well, you had taken Cardwell to the books. You took you hammered down there, closing laps. Then the restarts start coming up. Camden Johnson, did, unfortunately, he said he you know, those restarts kind of cost him. In your mind, is that kind of – kind of fly by with you as well because i mean you were catching him on certain points and then you had a battle as well i believe it was with the uh 17 of tucker there for a little while as well before that caution came oh yes sir uh, we got in a little battle i think it was uh me cody nevin and, and davin carwell had gotten a little like a three-car battle for third and fourth there and uh, i think tucker squeezed around us for a little bit but i was able to find my way back around him and uh you know the restart did kind of screw down over but i think i was getting some pretty good restarts off so i, I think i think the end result was inevitable but i don't want to Put anything past anybody, Camden is a hell of a driver. For sure there, everyone can really consider a winner or a heck of a driver in this one from start to finish. This was an absolute perform make, performance making for career here for you. Brent, congratulations on that. So let me ask you this as we close the night out. Who do you want to thank you for this? Oh, well, you know, I own White Knuckle Setup Shop. So if you want the same setup right here tonight, you can come grab it at White Knuckle Setup Shop. I want to thank all the staff I got over there, you know, that makes all this happen. Amazing group of guys. You know, we're, we're a great community over there. 
For sure there. Well, nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, Brent Carey is going to be the man of the hour, the man with the power. He takes it home to victory lane. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, guys. We'll see you again. Absolutely. Brent Carey, ladies and gentlemen, piloting up the number five tonight. Pops away with the W. And a big, big thank you to all you that tuned in. Our big friends over at Everlast Beco. Go and visit them up on their Facebook end. And be sure to check out all their local listing products and all that. Thank you so much to them for their support. Again, guys, it's been great. It's been a good show. But we must sign off for some time or another. So from all of us here at Pizza Race TV, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.